What's going on you guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital and welcome to the video. In this analysis specific video, because this is one of our new channels, we're going to be talking all about a company called Bumble. Now, this is actually kind of exciting for me because, uh, you know, I've always believed in the future, you could say, of dating apps. And I think, you know, it's, it's a really great idea and it definitely does work. And now I see the master plan unfolding, you know, with the premiums and the lifetime memberships and but there's also you know different style to certain apps like you got bumble you got tinder and a couple other apps i think those are the two most popular ones that i know but um i definitely see this being a huge market especially in this day and age especially with you know covid compounding everything you know it's like you can't go out to the bar to meet someone i mean you can but uh, it's, it's much harder people are becoming more and more private to themselves, getting used to staying at home, getting used to even working from home. So it's like, to me, I'm just really bullish on this industry. And then, you know, not too long ago or a year or two ago, I found out that Bumble is a public company. So let's actually see how long this stock has been trading for. So it's, I mean, the chart says it's been trading since March 1st, 2021. So let's just say Q1 of this year. So Bumble, you know, recently went public and uh, I've always been bullish in the company, but the stock hasn't really performed that great. So there's many different reasons why Bumble is not a top performing stock, but this is my first time really analyzing the company above and beyond just, you know, being bullish on in the industry, being bullish on the app specifically. And we're going to talk all about that in this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is going to be a lot of opinion. Um, we're going to go over the financials. We're going to go over, you know, my reasons why I'm bullish on Bumble and dating apps in general. And then, uh, yeah, let's just get into it. But this is one company that I do want to own one day. You know, right now I'm super focused on the companies that I invest heavily into. But uh, Bumble is one stock that I'm bullish on and it is one stock on my watch list. Now, last but not least, before we get into it, I got to say that this video is not financial advice, strictly just opinion. But if you do support the new channel and all my videos that I put out, kindly smash that like button along with hitting that subscribe button and the bell for notifications on future videos. And also drop me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Are you bullish on dating apps or Bumble specifically? What do you think, guys? Uh, anyway, so let's get into it. So Bumble has a $6.38 billion market cap. As of the close today, uh, trades for $34.58. Has a 52-week range of $30 all the way up to $84.80 and uh, average daily volume of 1.8 million shares so that is a heavily traded stock it's a it's a big company and uh you know let's get into their website but first i just want to quickly talk about the share performance and as we know it uh you know it ipo'd and it's pretty much downtrended since then so we did see a couple a couple plunges we are going to go over their earnings release or their most recent earnings release along with the financials as well, but I want to get, I want to go to their website first and see what they're all about. So make the first move, start meeting new people in your area. If you already have an account, sign in. So it's, it's pretty straightforward, you know, swipe right if you're interested in the person, swipe left if you're not. They've got three different types, Bumble Date, Bumble Biz, and Bumble, Bumble BFF. So I do like the fact that they're going above and beyond just dating. So there are, there is a business element and there is a BFF element. So we know all about dating. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So career opportunities come about when you expand your network on Bumble Biz. You can pursue a career change, meet team members, or become a mentor. So I think that's really, really cool. Never tried that aspect of it yet. And then we have whether you're new to a city or looking to expand your social circle, Bumble BFF is a simplified way to create meaningful friendships, which, you know, the dating element is one thing when you move to a new city. And I feel like that's, in a sense, easier to establish as opposed to actually meeting a friend, you know, just strictly just a friend, not, you know, pursuing a romantic relationship. But the cool thing about Bumble that I like is the fact that, uh, you know, girls make the first move. It's a more comfortable environment for girls. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. She's basically in control of the first message. Obviously, once two people are matched up and talking, it's a different story, but uh, it just creates a little bit more of a comfortable environment which I think is pretty cool. And I believe Bumble was founded by a woman. So yeah, I mean, I just simply Googled Bumble founder and that is Whitney Wolf Hurd. 
So uh, she is an American entrepreneur. She is the founder and CEO of publicly traded company Bumble, an online dating platform. She was previously the vice president of marketing for Tinder. Wow. So there we go. Just learned something. Yeah. So I consider this like a more refined version of Tinder. I know that Tinder can tend to be a place for like a little bit less serious things, which is fine. Every app has their time and place, but uh, I see a brighter future in a, in a company like Bumble, as opposed to Tinder, unless Tinder gets, you know, creative and starts to do things in, in different markets. Cause at the end of the day, I mean, like, I feel like human nature is to chase or to progress and relationships tend to pro progress as opposed to, you know, things on Tinder, they tend to be less serious. And like I said, there is a market for that, but I just, I, if I was to invest into a company, I'd rather invest into a company that's looking to build relationships, friendships, and business relationships. That just seems, uh, you know, like it have a better image. So total revenue increased 24% to 201 million. This is third quarter 2021 results. Bumble app revenue increased 39% to 142 million, raising 20, raising full year 2021 revenue and adjusted EBITDA outlook. We see the increases in revenue, but do app and other revenue decline 3% to 58 million. Total paying users increased to 2.9 million. Total average revenue per paying user increased to $22.97. Net loss was 10.7 million and net loss margin was 5.3% compared to a net loss of 22.8 million and a net loss margin of 14%. I'm going to assume the previous quarter adjusted EBITDA was 54.5 million or 27.2% of revenue compared to 53.7 million or 33.1% of revenue. So let's see what she had to say. Our strong results reflect continued growth in paying users and ARPPU. We also grew adjusted EBITDA year over year while continuing to make disciplined investments in product marketing and other people. That was words from the CFO of Bumble. Sorry, my apologies. We believe that we are well positioned for the fourth quarter given our ongoing product and market leadership combined with the operating leverage in our cost structure. Based on these factors, we are raising our full year 2021 outlook for both revenue and adjusted EBITDA. So the stock I believe it went down on their most recent quarterly earnings, you know, despite them raising guidance and um, the numbers by the looks of it increasing quite a lot. So let's take a look at the balance. Sheet. As of September 30th, 2021, total cash and cash equivalents were 291.6 million and total debt was 623.6 million. So that's where things get a little bit tricky, I guess you could say. So, Total debt, 623.6 million. See, this is the first time I've taken a look at the financials. Um, so I wanted to kind of get an idea because uh, if they were in a better financial position, I feel like the stock would not be where it's at today. So let's take a look. So let's compare December 31st, 2020 to September 30th, 2021. So these, uh, these are their condensed consolidated balance sheets in thousands except share and per share information. So cash and cash equivalents as of December 31st, 2020 was 128 million. Now it's 291 million with total current assets equaling just over two, so 251 million. Now they are 420 million. So December 31st, 2020 total assets of 3.6 billion Fast forward to September 30th, 2021, and total assets equate to 3.749 billion. Now let's take a quick look at their liabilities. So current liabilities, which uh, I feel like are more important, they were 241 million back last year, and now they are 157 million. So those have decreased. Now we see debt, long-term debt, also decreasing from 820 million to 620 million. With total liabilities totaling 1.5, just over 1.5 billion last year, and now 1.28 billion this year. So we are seeing assets increase, liabilities decrease, long-term debt decreasing. So, you know, the picture is not looking too bad now. You know, they do have a lot more long-term debt than they do have cash which is obviously something to take into account, but it does look like their financial position has improved 
from last year to this year. So that is a positive, I th at least I think. But now let's get into the revenue and see what's going on here. So let's compare three months ended September 30th to three months ended September 30th, 2021. So we did see an increase in revenue like we just talked about in uh, the press release. Total operating costs and expenses. We did see an increase in operating costs. Operating earnings. We did see a little, we did see a slight um, increase in operating losses and income loss before income tax. But uh, let's see here. So the net earnings loss. So the net earnings or loss last quarter or last year, this quarter was 22.8 million. This year it was 10.67 million. So that is, I see that at least as a positive. It's not increasing. The net earnings or loss is not increasing. So guys, we're gonna go back to the company, the stock, and just talk about, you know, my opinion, where I see Bumble going and uh, just, you know, why I'm bullish. But anyways, guys, the reason why I'm bullish on Bumble is because to me, it presents itself as, you know, a friendly place to go if you're looking to meet someone. Not just if you're looking to meet your partner, but also if you're looking to meet a friend or a business relationship. Like I just, the app itself works very well. The founder has clearly taken into account, I'm sure, negative experiences on dating apps. And, um, you know, she's structured it in a way where women get to choose. They get to reply first. When I think about the future of dating, you know, it's it's pretty obvious that it's going online and it's already online. And that's where so many people meet their person and not just, you know, a fun time. But a lot of people are meeting on these apps and actually like building real relationships because we're in this technological era and especially compounded with COVID. Like I said, not that many people are going to the bar anymore or partying or even going to the coffee shop. Like a lot of people are staying home. They're ordering food. They're more to themselves these days. So it's just like, if that's where the world's going and everyone's kind of staying home, how are you gonna meet people other than on the dating app? So I'm sure that despite the lack of share performance, Bumble is going to come out on top, especially with COVID, I feel like if anything, COVID has only benefited their business. So they're probably one of the businesses that will benefit the most just because like I said, less people going outside, less people meeting the traditional way like they used to and more people meeting online. So if I had to bet my money on one company, I would choose Bumble for those specific reasons, the refinement, the flexibility, not just being a dating app, but also business friendships, and uh, yeah, I just think it's a great platform. So that's my honest opinion on Bumble, guys. You can let me know your thoughts. Um, it was actually kind of fun to take a look at the company and actually take a look at their finances because that's something that I didn't really take a look at. Um, but that's why I like this analysis channel. It gives me a chance to really take a deeper look at certain companies, certain companies that I'm interested in, companies that you guys are interested in. So feel free to drop some comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on the video. If you feel otherwise, I love all opinions. And also let me know if there's companies that you want me to talk about and analyze. Because so I do this once a week. This is strictly for the community to provide additional content and to give the you know option or the chance of me covering a company that you guys might like. So I'll be doing this for a long time and I can and I plan to continue to do once a week, talk in depth about a company. So let me know in the comments. And that's it for the video. We'll see you guys in our next video. If you like these videos, kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Drop us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And finally, always remember, Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you wanna know the full disclosure details, check the description down below, along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.